Welcome to a new episode of Smart Talk TV. Today we will be drinking, yes, drinking wine with pleasure with uh, Selim Yasmin, founder of 209 Lebanese Wine, uh, which is um, a platform because I know it's a bit more than than just an e-commerce, a platform for uh, Lebanese wines. Um, Selim, how many Lebanese wineries are there? More than 50 Lebanese wineries. More than 50? Yes. And actually, we use this terminology because you have lots of hidden gems that people are still discovering, that we are still discovering, that are coming to us because they hear about 209 Lebanese wine and they come to us. So we cannot stop at the number. So it's more than 50 today? Yes. Um, this is amazing because I think a few years back there were like 15 around 15 wineries. It's a huge growth. Why, why, why is Lebanon becoming such a hub for, for wines? Because first we have all the components that will make a good wine. We have a very good terroir. We have a very good climate and weather. But we also have a passion. And uh, this is what makes a good wine. Uh, it's not only the technical ingredients, if you want, or the components or, or the terroir, but it's also the passion of the winemaker. And we have outstanding winemakers in Lebanon that are doing awesome wines. And that's why it's, it's becoming a trend and people love to do wine. So what's 209 Lebanese wine? It's actually a community, a platform that is dedicated to promote Lebanese wines. We're building an experience around the wineries, around the 209 wineries, for the wine lovers to create all that community, that mesh that is actually loving Lebanese wine. And online is our technical so platform. I, I go on 209, I can, yes. on 209 Lebanese wine, I can buy Lebanese wines. Yes. I can connect with other Lebanese wine lovers. Yes. I can, what else, discover wineries? Actually, uh, let's start from the, the, the beginning. 209 opened to all the Lebanese wineries the opportunity to be present and to be listed on a platform. So the first thing we did to the wineries and to the wine lovers is create the variety and the choice. So the first thing we did is open up the market to all the wineries, to be, to be connected with all the wine lovers. We didn't, stop we didn't stop here. The next step for the wine lovers is actually to be guided to find their appropriate bottle of wine. Because when you actually open up all this choice, the first thing is that people will get lost because they discovered lots of wine without knowing which one is suitable for them. So we created a powerful back-end or algorithm that will actually... Uh, uh, advice the wine lovers about the, uh, the the good bottle of wine that is suitable for their taste. So I'm planning to eat white cheese tonight. Yes. And uh, I love, I don't know, sugary stuff. I can find the wine I want? Exactly. You will find wow. a menu, a filter uh, uh, that will guide you starting with the, the food pairing, the aromas, the variety of the grape that is making the wine, the winery, and the budget. And then you will have a selection of Lebanese wineries that is suitable for your choice. You will then discover the tasting note of each bottle and make your choice accordingly. And if I buy my wine on your platform, is it at market prices or am I buying it uh, cheaper, more expensive? It's at market prices. We usually follow the recommended prices that are coming from the wineries. We discovered later on that in most cases we're a bit less expensive. Uh, that, uh, and this is another incentive. It's not done on purpose. We align our prices with the wineries and we provide all the side advantages to the wine lovers. I'm asking this because I know part of your... Um one of your big concerns, and we've discussed this uh, in, in separate occasions, is is protecting the wineries. I mean, you 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 really want to promote. The, you, you are passionate about about protecting yes. these wineries and yes. getting them out there. Yes. Um, 
it's um, do is ship, I know in in Lebanon shipping can be a problem. I mean internal internally to Lebanon. I'm not even talking about export. Yes. Is shipping uh, today? Do you feel this is hindering people from from buying Lebanese wines from you? Not at all. It's a facility that uh, we provide to the wine lovers. Uh, it's actually a, a positive point and it's an advantage uh, because it's a convenience. I mean, if you want to buy 12 uh, bottles of wine, it's not going to be very practical to carry them and keep them in your car until you get home. The wine might get hot, uh, uh, might get spoiled. So part of our promise is to deliver and ship the wine to the customers uh, in perfect conditions. It's a solution. It's, it's not an issue. Uh, we promise that service to the customers, and we take care of the hassle that is behind it. And here is, uh, 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 I mentioned hassle, because to fulfill that promise, we are extremely picky on our delivery partners. Some of the wine are delivered with our own fleet, and sometimes we, use, we outsource the delivery. And here is the key, because we are extremely picky on the selection of the delivery and the follow-up to be able to fulfill that promise to the customer. We're going to talk about, about customer follow-up because, uh, as you know, Smart Talk is also a lot about lessons learned as an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, but to continue a bit on, on, on the company itself, um, by the way, what does 209 mean? Why 209? I like this question. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we, we wanted the name to be subtle. We chose 209 because it's the color reference of red wine. So, uh, oh, the Pantone, the number. Pantone color. So, okay. uh, uh, and we chose the Pantone because it's actually linking design, creativity, and wine together. And we are using creative and designer approach to wine. I sense a background in marketing. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. What did actually, you do before? What's your background, Salim? Uh, I actually worked in marketing uh, uh, for 20 years. Uh, I'm a marketing that is serving the wine today. Uh, I, I actually started my career in uh, brand management of wine and spirits, and part of it was uh, a wine, uh, wine portfolio. And I was part of the team behind the opening and the start of uh, very famous wine shops in Lebanon. So, uh, so you know the, the business a little bit. So the business is, uh, is here. So we, we have that experience. Coming back to the Pantone, we purposely chose the Pantone because it's in, it inspires trust. When you want to, to get the same color every time, you trust that it's consistent. We want the values of consistency, of reliability and reference that the Pantone is portraying. How do you deliver on trust? I mean, it's, it's, I, th I, I, I love that you opened the topic because... In many of our interviews with successful entrepreneurs, uh, such as yourself, we always get back that keyword mm. of, you know, we, we want to build that trust with our customers. Yes. And trust is, I mean, it's obviously beyond just having a logo and, and, a, nice, uh, and, as an, and a nice name. Uh, it's about execution. How do you ensure trust? What's, mm. What makes 209 trustworthy for your customers yeah. or not? Actually, trust is a practice. You start by living it. And it starts with humility and transparency. If you want someone to trust you, you're not going to tell him, I can create a new example. world what for you. What do you mean by transparency? We speak to all our customers. And if a mistake happens, you admit it and you fix it. And mistakes will happen. Whether we want it or not, it's how you react to it. And uh, what we do actually, because it's an online platform, to create that community and that experience, we actually pick up the phone and call every customer to talk about the, their wine choice, to talk about the delivery, what they should expect. And then we follow up with them. And by keeping a close contact, this is how you, uh, you earn their trust. And by being transparent, this is how you earn their trust. You need to be professional and transparent so when you have the experience so customer service is is something you've really built into into the dna of of 209 yes yes definitely uh, it's it's at the basis of our business model uh, because i mean customers deserve a good service they are paying money for a good service and when for a you good wine for a good wine yes uh, we don't produce wine no, so no, our no, transparency here 
is to say to the customer, some wines, this is my taste or not, but based on what you want, I could recommend a type of wine, not a brand of wine. We are at equal distance with all the wine so producers. So trust starts with good products that you're yes. sourcing, mm -hmm. good recommendations. Yes. You're able to make good, good and transparent recommendations, and trans unbiased. Unbiased. Yes. Um, and third, great customer service. Yes. Are you delivering on these three? I hope I am. The customers decide. We have so a very about the high retention rate. Most of the customers come back for regular purchase. This says that they are happy. This tells That's you something usually about the it. ultimate proof. And we always seek to understand even the customers that do not come back, why they don't come back, and eventually they come back. 209 Lebanese wine, what's the lowest price of a bottle? Six or seven dollars. Highest? 50 something very still very affordable uh, i mean yes. you can a range of choices basically in into that yes selim let's let's dwell a little bit more into into the execution you know before the execution actually i i while while researching for for the for the um, for the program i i i looked a bit uh, obviously at the website and and how it works uh, you put very much in your face in the website about the club Yes. The 209 Club. Can you tell me a bit more about, about that? Actually, part of the mission of 209, when we created it, is to help wine lovers discover wineries and put in contact the wineries with them. So the best way to do so is actually to subscribe, to become a wine club member, and based on that subscription, you will benefit from receiving every month a couple of bottles based on your subscription package, that is at least worth what you paid for to discover new wineries as we go. So every month so I can every get two month, bottles at my house? You will get two bottles without knowing what is coming, with their tasting notes, with the recommendation, with everything. So it's a discovery pack, a subscription. Don't worry about the payment. You pay once. You get all your wines for all the year. And uh, you will discover wineries that you never heard of. 209. How many bottles? When did you start, by the way? We started in October 2016. Okay. How many bottles of wine shipped? More than 10,000 bottles. Wow. Um, let's go a little bit before we... So let's focus a bit on the execution. Yeah. Um, how are you getting your customers? In Lebanon, you're going to have several ways. We usually marry offline and online initiatives. You're not going to rely on only one thing. You, you have That's a 360 approach. Uh, in, in, as a practice, actually, uh, people that are purely online seek for marrying that with an offline experience and the other way around as well. So it always comes to, uh, uh, to marrying those two practices to a 360 degrees. It's based definitely on digital. Uh, is, is digital advertising, I mean, efficient today? It's a question I ask to most of my guests mm. because I keep hearing these different opinions that today it's not worth your, your, your advertising dollars anymore. Some tell me it's extremely efficient. What's yeah. Selim's Yasmin's take alone, on that? Alone, it, it, it could be uh, uh, less than expected. Uh, it's uh, usually by default, everything is in the details. So uh, as a general comment, I, I don't think it, uh, it applies or it is valid. It, it, does it work or not? But it depends on the strategy, it depends on the product, and it depends on the practice. Are you, so, are you being successful with your, with your digital adver advertising? Yes. You're getting your worth your money? Yes. But yet alone, it doesn't work. It has to be married with offline, with PR, with close contacts with customers. Word of mouth is key and is not expensive. And it's another, uh, uh, if you want, consequence of a good customer service. But, but that, that works initially in, in uh, and I'm provoking a little bit, but that works in, in a small market like Lebanon. Yes. Let's assume tomorrow, and, and I haven't asked you, is 209 International already? Are you shipping outside of Lebanon? We have part of a foot outside Lebanon. We now can serve 
any country in the world, delivery cost is still expensive, and we are working on making it more cost, cost effective. Uh, we are working on reducing that cost to the customers, and this is our next challenge. Um, to go back, if you wanted to acquire customers through digital, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, outside, without that capacity of what you can do within Lebanon in terms yeah. of offline and, and word of mouth, would you go through the digital advertising path outside? It's more powerful outside than in Lebanon. You think? Already we start in Lebanon with a small handicap that Google doesn't al advertise alcohol or tobacco in the Middle East. So uh, that's, uh, I'm not sure if they advertise tobacco outside, but for wine, 209 cannot advertise with a target being Lebanon. Okay, that makes it so, difficult. So you, you start in the international markets with an advantage that you can use a, a Google network to, uh, to advertise wine. In, in your trials outside, because if I understand well, you have tried, uh, yes. I mean, you're, you're starting internationally. Yeah. Um, does, first of all, is there an attraction? Who are the customers for Lebanese wines? And does the brand Lebanon sell? I'm going to tell you. Uh, the brand Lebanon is difficult, especially when you talk about wine. The initial target to any Lebanese product today outside Lebanon is the diaspora. And it's the start of a niche market. I mean, Lebanon has survived years with the help of a diaspora. And uh, this is a start of a niche market. Lebanon wine would sell to diaspora, but would also sell, and this is where the high-end wines will be successful, as an exotic, eclectic wine, not as an entry-level price. The entry-level would work with the Lebanese diaspora because they always want to try their hometown. There is that emotional factor. Uh, one other thing that is, it makes it appealing to advertise online outside Lebanon is that they are far more advanced in terms of usage. So in Lebanon, we spent a lot of money also in educating people to buy online. So one, that challenge is barely a, a, a challenge outside Lebanon. So your, your KPIs start with a, a small uh, advantage of people already willing to buy something online. So your challenge is to get them to buy Lebanese wine and also the Google uh, thing. You've gotten your customers. Mm -hmm. How are you, what's your lessons learned in terms of retaining them and making them recurring customers? How, how does that transformation work? You need to stay on top of their mind. And that's, that's not only direct sale, that's, that's the awareness that we are building as well. Because uh, lots of things go through their mind every day. They are bombarded with ads. So they could forget you as, at any minute. The key for that is to, to make them remember you. And they remember not only by seeing an ad, but they remember when you actually mark them in something. It doesn't have to be something material. It, it could be a birthday card. It could be anything. But the key is to stay close because otherwise they will forget you. To treat them well because they deserve it and they will come back. Uh, treating them well. It's always the key of, uh, of any, any business at the end of the day, treating their customers well. Um, you, you were part uh, of Agritech. Uh, the accelerator managed by Beritech. Yes. How was that experience? It was a very good experience. Uh, I actually had the right training and coaching and sessions at the right time. So uh, we've been through different phases, from a boot camp uh, to uh, an acceleration to an incubation. And I can remember that they provided to us the right training and the right topic with the right experts at the right time. Is it for everyone? Is an accelerator, you having, having, having been through that machine, mm. is an accelerator recommended for every entrepreneur? I mean, it's definitely adding value for every entrepreneur. Is the entrepreneur able and ready 
to uh, because to 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 meet that requirement it's also up to the entrepreneur you need dedication and you need time and you need openness they provide the tools and the entrepreneur has all the benefit that he will need provided that you dedicate the time and uh, and you actually focus on it um, how is 209 finance today so far we started with uh, our own equity, our own investment. Bootstrapping also? Yes, and a loan from Kafalat. We want to grow now. and uh, it's, Are you it's, looking for funds? It's very, yeah, I am looking for, fun, for funds to grow more rapidly. Uh, time is money, and the money part here is, is the fund. So a question any fund would ask is, what's the growth of, of, of Tona? I mean, what's the, where is the scalability? Where do you find it? Is it it's by going international? Is it by growing locally? Where, where is the by you know different products? It's limitless. The growth is limitless because we just started, and we're somehow doubling volumes as we speak. So uh, and this is by bootstrapping. So being cost effective when we have an investor next to us, we will still be cost effective. Mm -hmm. But we will get more results. Yeah, but more, what I mean is, are you taking the international route yeah. or would you prefer to sell more products on your platform trying to increase the, the average sales ticket? I mean, selling accessories, gadgets. I, know. It, I, I don't have to take the choice. Maybe today, without an investor, we will need to prioritize. There's a lot to do in the local market in terms of upselling because we are building a community. So the investor is not buying into a technical platform only. We are buying into a community of wine lovers that could be interested in buying cheese, that could be interested in events, that could be... How, big, for how big is that community in Lebanon? It's big. It's big. Uh, we're talking at least 300,000 people. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So uh, that, that's the market size today that in we Lebanon. are... Uh, in Lebanon to... Uh, and the same model, if we just stick to the Lebanese diaspora, we can get to at least 2 million Lebanese outside Lebanon that are willing to buy Lebanese wine. So uh, when you have an investor on board, you're definitely not going to uh, throw away their money. You're still going to be cost effective, but with less prioritization. So I will not have this question when I have the investor, uh, is, is it this or that? If I can do both... We will do both, but, but and is this it, is the growth path. Is it easy to get investors in Lebanon? No, it's not. It's very difficult. Uh, and uh, it's uh, getting an investor in Lebanon takes time. And my advice to entrepreneur is to start with that goal in mind. They're not going to show up and, and, uh, and give you the money in two weeks. So you need to be ready for bootstrapping until your investor comes on board. When you have a good product, a good vision, and you have that passion, you will, you will get your investor. It's not only a, a game of money, it's within you. So what we're trying to do now is not to hook any investor because of the money. We have the passion in that uh, startup, and we know we're going to get there. We just need an investor that will ride that wave with us to get there quicker. Um, it definitely, I mean, raising money is a challenge anywhere in the world. Mm. It's it's getting a nice. Um, but you know, one thing that could be scary is if you're planning to grow and you are, as you're telling us, to reach that expat community, which is huge, outside of Lebanon, shipping out of Lebanon. You know, we, we, we interviewed a few, we had Karim Sayali from bylebanese.com who was telling us it's problematic. Mm -hmm. It's it's There is something that is not working in the way this is being done in Lebanon. What's your take into on, on, on that? What's your take on, on shipping out of Lebanon? There is a business model that is suitable for every product. Today, we are shipping individual orders to international clients. It's happening. Lots of clients are willing to pay the price. It's a bit complicated. They get their wines. They get their wines, they pay for it, and they're very happy. To get more volume, the formula of shipping needs to be different. And it exists. No, I'm, I'm talking about shipping costs out of Lebanon. Yeah. 
I mean, how expensive is that? It is, it is, uh, I mean, it's... Do, do you know that 40% of the production of Lebanese wine today is exported? This but on B2B, not as B2C, as bulk exports. Exactly. But as a challenge, is it? do you really think this is not going to be a problem for you shipping out? Maybe it is not, I'm just asking, into shipping as, you know... F- as a B2C, uh, a customer in, in uh, you know, a Lebanese mm. expatriate in the yeah. U.S. ordering yes. a bottle of wine here. Yes. Is this a problem? It's not a problem because there's a b- different business model for every scenario. So here, this customer is not going to get his wine shipped directly from Lebanon. This customer, the, the, the logistic scenario okay. would be to actually ship by sea a container that contains all the Lebanese wines. And you're going to have a a shipping platform elsewhere. There should be a hub. Last week we were in the Netherlands and we set up uh, an entity uh, of 209 to serve Europe. This entity will import in bulk and sell in uh, in B2C. So you're setting up a hub in in the Netherlands for for Europe. Yes. For now. Yes. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you. Um, Is is why, why the Netherlands? Netherlands is interesting because it's a logistics platform for all Europe, if not for the whole world. So uh, also in partnership with, uh, with Beditech, we have a partner there that is helping us establish that. What's interesting is the network and the logistics. The market of wine locally in the Netherlands is not big. Uh, yet it is an access point to the entire continent. It is. It is the world's shipping uh, shipping capital, uh, exactly. sort of uh, Netherlands and Dubai more and more. Um, Selim, um, your in terms of regulations in in Lebanon, is there any hurdles or not really? I actually going to uh, take the hat of the Lebanese wineries. For 209, so far, I'm fine with the regulations. We didn't have lots of no, issues. No, it's about the wines, yes. The wineries are not getting the support from the authorities. Today, one of the reasons why the wineries are struggling and their price is expensive is that they are forced to import everything. Uh, they import the bottles, they import the corks, the foil. Some wineries even import the label. Uh, and they bottle their wines here and they export it again. And on everything they do, they pay fees, they pay taxes. They do not get any support for a reduced electricity bill or any... So this is one of the main obstacles of Lebanese wine competing on the international market because they do not get the needed support from the local authorities. That would not be the, the first industry telling us this and on, on this show. Uh, unfortunately, but still, I mean, going from 15 to, mm. to 50 wineries means there's something out there. Um, it's the quality. That's the something. Lebanon doesn't have the capacity to do huge volumes because of a limited land. Their only choice is to make an outstanding wine. And that's why they are 50, because it's a high-end quality. How does our wine compare to, how does Lebanese wine compare to foreign wines, quality-wise? It's a great wine. You have a variety today in Lebanon of awesome wines and not so awesome, but the the average is a great quality due to... I see the salesman here. You see the passionate person that loves the product that he has. Well, good salesmen (laughs) are usually passionate. (laughs) Uh, Selim, let's take that marketing hat, that that passion hat a little bit on the side. Um, let me speak to Selim, the entrepreneur. How difficult or not has it been, has it been for you to, to put that entrepreneur hat and, you know, dwelling with finance, dwelling with logistics, dwelling, which are not your core, it's not, it's not what your training yeah. or your, your career has been, has been about. Yeah. Um, has, has this been something very difficult or not really? You've, you've, you know, it came easily. It's definitely very difficult as a start. You need to organize yourself. You cannot do on the same day uh, legal and finance and logistics and customer service and marketing and go source wine. It's it's just just spreading it and organizing the time that 
uh, today I'm not doing any fiscal work. We'll talk about it tomorrow. So when you actually organize this, it becomes rich. And it, yet it's def very difficult, but it's extremely fulfilling. That's the life of the entrepreneur is fulfilling. There is a big reward you, you, you when left, you do all of this. Uh, you, left your organize job, it. you left your job, mm -hmm. um, your day job. You have two kids uh, to risk it all. Yes. At the end of the day, why? Because I want to follow a passion. Because I want to work for something that I love. And I want to bring a solution to a problem that exists and nobody's looking at. How is your family living that? Because it's very risky. I mean, you're yeah. cutting a salary. You're, yes. you're, uh, I mean, you're risking a lot. You're, yeah. you're your own money. Mm -hmm. How is your family living that? That. Stress a lot. A lot of our, unfortunately, and we see it a lot in the accelerator. A lot of our startups do not always get the family support that they thought they would get, mm -hmm. because they get a lot of pressure. Yeah. You know, in, in they Lebanese, are, they are extremely supportive. Actually, uh, uh, my wife is is taking care of part of our communication. She's very much involved and uh, very supportive. Uh, that always helps. Exactly. It's a see, relief. It's a relief. Um, Selim, I wish you the best of, um, of luck. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I noticed you haven't mentioned in your day work tasting the wine, but I'm sure that's part of your... Uh, it comes as, uh, as it goes. It's, uh, it's something automatic today. <laughs> Don't drink too much. That's it's a tasting. rule. It's tasting. <laughs> Don't drink and drive because unfortunately we do get many accidents in, in at least in Lebanon. Uh, Selim Yasmin, thank you very much. Thank you.